In this video, we have prepared for you four fascinating testimonies in which Padre Pio knew the unlikely outcome of events. He knew all these things without leaving the convent. Padre Pio, a forerunner of working from home. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Following Padre Pio, about the Capuchin monk, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint, and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. If you're new to our channel, then please like, share, and subscribe. But the best way to get involved in our Padre Pio apostolate is to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. Just click the link in the description below. Padre Pio never ceased to amaze those who came to him. Not only did he have the gift of insight into people's souls, but he also knew about events taking place far from him, or even in the future. Today, we take a look into four testimonies from four different people who witnessed the truth of Padre Pio's words. Our first testimony is from Adriana Palotti, Padre Pio's spiritual daughter, who left her life in the city and moved to San Giovanni Rotondo to be closer to him. Adriana would ask Padre Pio for his opinion when she needed to make an important decision. On one occasion, she came to him and asked whether she should go visit her parents. Yes, go visit those poor people, replied Padre Pio. Adriana was baffled by this answer. Why did he call her parents poor? So she traveled 600 kilometers, or approximately 370 miles north to Modena, her hometown. To her surprise, she found her family sick with tuberculosis. So she stayed with them for a long time and became even more convinced that her spiritual father was indeed a servant of God. The second testimony is from Giovanna Russo. One day she was preparing to attend Padre Pio's Mass when her mother had a heart attack. It was so bad, Giovanna thought her mother might die. So she decided to stay home and not go to Mass. But her mother insisted, go to the convent. Go talk to the priest and ask him to pray for me. So she listened. She arrived at the church and came to the confessional, but couldn't say a word. She was crying for a long time, and then finally Padre Pio managed to get her to speak. She explained that her mother just had a heart attack and that she fears the mother might die. Then, almost indifferently, without giving much importance to the seemingly grave situation, Padre Pio said, You always see everything black. She's fine, and maybe she's already talking to the neighbors. Padre Pio resumed his confessions, and Giovanna sat in the pew, still very shaken. Father Luciano, who oversaw the order of Padre Pio's confessions, came to her and asked, Do you not trust the words of the father? Do you want to bet your mother is fine? He offered to walk her home. When Giovanna entered the house, she saw her mother chatting with her friends. Can you imagine the relief she must felt? This reminds me of the story of the centurion. When the centurion comes to Jesus to ask him to heal his paralyzed servant, the centurion puts his absolute trust in Jesus. And Jesus, without even seeing the sick servant, heals him in that very hour. Let us ask Padre Pio to heal us especially of our spiritual illness. This third testimony was given by Aioli Cassano in 2004. She tells us between 1933 and 1934, in San Giovanni Rotondo, there was an epidemic of scarlet fever, which caused the death of many children. I was only a few years old when I fell ill. One morning, Dad saw that I had a very high fever, so he got scared and he went to the convent to talk to Padre Pio. Pio listened to him carefully and then smiling said to him, Don't worry, go home in peace. The child will surely not have a fever. And it was so. Our last testimony is the story of Vincenzo Saponaro, a primary school teacher who lived in Tolve, 
a small town in the province of Potenza. He wanted his children to have a better education than just primary school. So after getting approved for a job transfer, they moved to Naples. However, as time went by, he began to have serious doubts about his decision and asked Dr. Giovanni Delfino, who was Padre Pio's spiritual son, to accompany him to San Giovanni Rotondo to ask Padre Pio what to do. Arriving at the convent, Giovanni, who knew the behavior of the Padre very well, told his friend who was waiting together with the others in the corridor, if the holy man stops in front of you, it means he will speak to you. And indeed, Padre Pio stopped in front of Vincenzo. Father, said Vincenzo, I moved to Naples, but I don't know if I should return to my city, Tolve. Padre Pio replied, go home, my children, go home. Dr. Delfino got involved, but Vincenzo has three children who after primary school should continue their studies. Padre Pio replied, but he has schools everywhere. It's 1960, and there is no high school in Tolve. But Vincenzo followed Padre Pio's advice, and shortly after returning, a secondary school was established in the small town. So despite the unlikeliness of these outcomes and events, Padre Pio knew exactly what was going to happen. These witnesses at first seriously doubted Padre Pio's words, and who could blame them? But after seeing that what Padre Pio has stated was true, they must have acquired a strong sense of God's presence as a result. Can you imagine how wonderful it was for these people to bear witness to these miracles? To have their faith strengthened through this grace? Padre Pio, please pray for the unbelievers. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't yet, please do enroll in the next Friday's Padre Pio Mass. You will find the link in the description below. Please subscribe, click the reminder bell, and share with your friends to help promote our channel. Check out the video on the end screen and stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.